God bless you and welcome to Bethel's live stream. It's March. I think it's the Psalms of Solomon that says, the winter is past, the rain is gone, the flowers appear on the earth again. It's the time of the singing of the birds and the voice of the turtles. The turtle doves can be heard in the air. For the first time in about nine, 11 months, I'm feeling within my spirit, something is about to break. Something is about to break, but we need to continue to stay focused. We need to continue to keep our mask on and practice social distancing and washing of our hands. And uh, uh, the vaccine is out and, and, and many people are taking it. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing. I'm also hearing that uh, Texas and Mississippi, which incidentally only has 7% of the entire state population has taken it, but they have thrown away their masks, opened up all their restaurants, opened up all their schools, and so different variances are coming. So while we are experiencing trying to put the thing together, we got some... Stay focused, Bishop. Those kind of people that are around. You don't be one of those people to tempt the Lord God. Make sure that you do not tempt the Lord God. Make sure, because if you tempt the Lord, he's gonna be the one that's going to win. You understand that? All right, so we're in a series of, 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 of messages and I think it's going to prepare us for uh, April, May, June, and July, okay? Uh, things are going to happen. Let me prophesy to you, put this on record, all right? That um, I told you January, February, and March was gonna be dark months. We're gonna experience some things there. I uh, told you that in October, November, going into December, January, just dark, the insurrection went on. Uh, uh, February, now you have these states opening up prematurely. Uh, you know, a lot of things is happening. Uh, but we're to rise and shine for the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. And the scripture says, though darkness shall cover the earth, even gross darkness the people, but the glory of the Lord shall shine upon us. So God is going to give us a way to shine amidst all of the crises, amidst all of the storms that we're going through. We're going to be able to see the face of God clearly. And so I want you to stay focused, okay? I want you to do that. Now, uh, uh, now we get into March. March is uh, it's going to be magnificently, miraculously, marvelous with much mixed up in it. Then we go into April and May, and I showed you in the vision that the Lord gave me that in the month of May, uh, uh, the flowers are blooming, little water petals are on the flowers, the bees are flying around, the effervescence of, 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 of honeysuckles is in the air, the smell of fresh cut grass. Oh, it's spring, spring going into the summer months. And then the Lord showed me the calendar of May as it counted down from May the 1st down to right about the, the, the 18th, the 20th. Uh, a frost came in and caused the flowers to wither and to freeze, which means that some are going to open up too soon and have to pull back. And he showed me this in the school systems also, uh, public school 27s, it's clean, smells uh, pristine, it is together. The kids are at lunchtime as they're moving through, going into for their lunch, they slip on these clear puddles of water and uh, uh, spring their ankles, bust their nose. There's blood and contorting around, which means that there's a variance that is coming that's gonna hit in the school systems. Now I'm saying this prophetically to you and I always say it like this, I wanna be wrong. I, I, I don't want this to be right. I don't want this to be correct. But if we're judging through history and if you're checking history, checks a person's credit uh, for the past 11 months, 12 months, God has showed me has come to pass. This season of fasting and praying has done something for me and has given me a focus and a clarity again in the realm of the spirit. In a few months from now, I'll be sharing with you a little bit more. I know I'm doing a lot of talking this morning uh, because I'm excited about what God is going to do for you, but I also want you to stop drifting. I want you to get back on your post and I want you to be vigilant and I want you to be able to see and understand 
glory be to God. Now, um, about June and July, uh, I'm going to prophesy and tell you about June, July, there probably will be about 200 to 230, 240 million people in the United States of America that have been fully uh, vaccinated. They, they, they take the vaccine fully uh, done there. The movements will be a little bit different. Fourth of July will be different from Fourth of July this past Fourth of July. When you know some numbskulls didn't pay attention to it anyway, so it'll be the same Fourth of July for them. They're the reason why we had this setback in the first place. Christmas will be something, and then New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve, I believe that New Year's Eve will be back in our sanctuary, fully open, fully operating, going forth in the name of Jesus. I don't know, I don't know how many members are coming back. I don't know. I just know that the church has been strong through the storms. I know there's going to be a lot of other churches that's going to open up a lot earlier than us, but I'm going to be closed, and the way that you're going to meet me is online. My first indoor service, probably, unless the Holy Spirit says something different, because people are always trying to check me. So uh, unless the Holy Spirit says something differently, New Year's Eve, December the 31st, will be the first service inside the building as we're moving into 2022. 2022. But we may do something outside before we come into the building. It'll be totally sanitized. It'll be clean. There'll be new things happening. And I'll be waiting for all the new members that joined us and watched us. Uh, and and, and I hopefully that everyone who was here when, we, when this thing started, it still will be here. I don't understand anybody finding a new ministry during this time. What are you going to do, change channels? I mean, this is just crazy it's stuff that people go through in their mental capacity. Uh, but I'll be praying uh, for you in the name of Jesus. Now, the song that is playing right now uh, 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 is asking a question. And it's thankful uh, to the Lord. I uh, say because it could have been me outdoors, no food, no clothes. There's a slang that they're using in the nation now. It says, could have been me. Uh, and, and, and uh, you know, you would think they're saying couldn't have been me, but they're saying could have been me, uh, or, 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 you know, why you didn't pick me. Now, that's not how we're singing this song. We're singing this song in the vernacular of, of, of the intentions of the writer of the song. Tragedies are commonplace. All sorts of diseases, people are slipping away. The economy's down, can't get enough pay. As for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you done for me. It could have been me outdoors, no food, no clothes, or just another number with a tragic end. You saved me by, uh, uh, but you didn't let none of these things be. You saved me by your power, and you keep on keeping me. And I want to stop long enough to say, Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Hey, it could have been me outdoors. Covering 
for the blessings that are on you. I gave you a countdown for March, April, May, June, July, by July, August, September, October, November, and December, and then January. What seems to be a long way from now We'll be looking up and it'll feel like we just said this three months ago. I promise you, things are going to get better. Not, not, not just because they have to. It's God's law and his cycle of how God turns things. Are you ready to pray? Let's pray. Let's pray. It won't be a long prayer this morning because this morning we don't want to ask for a whole lot. We want to do what the song just said. We want to thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him for every mountain. Woo! Hallelujah. This morning I come today, God, to just give you thanks for waking me up this morning. Once again, in my right mind or as much of my right mind I had when I went to sleep last night. For food on the table. For my children getting better. For having some place to lay my head. For the grace that comes along with being able to pay my bills. Little aches and pains in my body, but I thank you because others are on chemotherapy and I'm not. Others are on radiation treatment. Others are on dialysis. And I know you're blessing them in their present situation, but I thank you for what you've done for me in my situation. Be pleased to receive my praises for all that you have done for me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Woo! church on this morning. Let's have a little bit of church on this morning.
just another day that the Lord has kept me. Oh yeah, yeah, just another day that the Lord has kept me. With my mind stayed on Jesus One more day Just another day That Lord. the Lord has kept me Oh yeah, yeah, yeah and your doors and to your homes or wherever you are for us to minister to you. We're in a, another series. I like ministry series, um, uh, particularly, especially ones like this that puts us in the, the set time that we're now living in. We're in the Jezebel Spirit Reveal series. The first message was the introduction and it's uh, you can't keep doing this. It's going to kill you. Our first lesson was uh, uh, last Sunday, and uh, uh, it was, uh, well, our first message was, I think, Tuesday, if I'm, I'm, if I'm correct. Let me see, introduction. Then last Sunday, I'm sorry, last Sunday was um, right covenant, wrong friend. And then on this past Tuesday night, uh, uh, the call for the uh, spirit of Elijah and our message today is lesson number three fight with fire fight with fire let us pray prelude you alone is worthy of glory and honor and praise you, God, alone gives us the wisdom to get wealth. You also invested in us power to tread upon scorpions. Tonight, we ask that you send that anointing, the power to tread upon scorpions, serpents, 
wisdom of a serpent, power of a scorpion, that our, our heel shall bruise their head as we come into the full prophetic knowledge who we are and who you called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. All of my messages from the beginning of the year starts in Revelations chapter number five. I won't carry you through the pressure of having to read the whole text, so I'll just talk to you about it for a little while. It's John on the Isle of Patmos. And uh, John is in exile on the Isle of Patmos. Everyone is expecting him to die. Uh, it is after the great crusades, tribulation is everywhere. They've gone after all of the disciples and John finds himself in exile and um, waiting to die, but God has other plans for him. He's snatched out of his spirit and he's thrusted up into the heavens. I believe it's Revelation chapter number four that says, and a door in heaven was opened and he stood before the Lord and the first voice he heard as if it was a trumpet talking to me is what he said. And he said, come up hither, for I will show you things that will surely be hereafter. John fell on his face as if he was dead. The hand of the Lord touched him and said, fear not, for I am he who was, who is, and who shall forever be. John sits up, and the Lord begins to reveal unto John why you are here. He carries him around the heavens, and he shows him the mysteries of God. He shows him water. He shows him rain shows him oxygen he shows him wind he shows him the chambers of the universe more importantly than anything else he shows him gravity how to be grounded when your whole entire world is turning and how you don't fall off because it's turning so many of you are in trouble because COVID-19 has turned the earth and you've fallen off while the turn but others are grounded in a word that God has spoken. And so as you would have it, he begins to show him the mystery of the ages. He shows him plagues. He shows him healing. He shows him angels. And he gives him the mystery of seven. Seven trumpets and seven bowls and seven angels and seven churches and seven stars. Seven, 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 seven. And he gives him the wisdom of the perfection of seven. Then he carries him into the part of heaven that no human had ever been in before. There he sees God sitting on the throne with his hand over the right side of the chair, of the throne's chair, and in his hand is a scroll with seven seals on it. And he hears pandemonium in the kingdom of heaven because no one has the power to open up the seals to release the mysteries thereof and they send out search parties to find someone who is righteous and holy have enough deference and great relationship with God to open up the seals the scripture says they found none they looked in the heavens and none in heaven they looked in the earth and none in the earth. They looked in the sea and none in the sea. And then they looked under the sea, and under the earth. Imagine going into hell and could not find any. And John began to weep. He wept because he knew that if the seals wasn't open, then the completion of the assignment of humanity could not be completed. And as he was weeping, an angel phenomenal winged creature flew over to, to John and said chin up man and dry your eyes and stop crying for the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to open up the seal and scripture says they sang a new song They sang a new song.
So now the rest of the scripture is going to be narrated through John and the minstrels of heaven. A new song. Strings and keys and trumpets. the song because it was a song that they were singing that no one had ever heard before and this song wasn't being sung out of their mouth the song was being sung out of their spirit a new song seal was popped open there went forth four horses a white a red a black a pale yeah went forth galloping representing much of what I'm going to preach about tonight plagues calamity insurrections idols sorcery witchcraft and believers those who have a relationship with God fights with fire Revelation chapter number 2 verse number 18 through 24 opens up and it says and the angel of the church of fire tire write these things saith the Son of God, who hath eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and thy last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffered that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into a great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest of Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. In verse number 23, he says, I will kill her children with death. And all of the churches, all of the churches, he said, I'm going to search the reins and the hearts and I will give according to every man their works. That's the song. Woo. That's the song. A new song. A new song. A new song. That's the song. That's the song. That's the song. It's a song of judgment in this moment. It's a song of anarchy. It's a song of repentance. It's a song of grace. It's a song of hell's fire. 
all of it is together in repentance grace without repentance full judgment full judgment full judgment and remember the song remember the song it is something that you've never heard before the pandemic is something that you have never heard before you might be used to it right now in 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 a year into it but oh buddy what's about to be released out of these next trumpets and these next vows is going to blow your mind war is coming antichrist is coming spirit of jezebel is coming and that's why we must prepare ourselves in this particular hour for what's about to transpire oh a new song a new song Woo. In Revelation chapter number 13, verses 1 and 2, and then 16 and 18, it reads like this. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as feet of a bear, his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, and on their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he had, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred, three score, and six. So, those that are a little bit nervous and afraid and about taking the vaccine, I understand it. I understand what happened to black people and people of color questions come to me all the time is this the mark of the beast I promise you it's not whether you should take it or not you judge yourself I think you should probably protect yourself I don't want to be the one to tell you to take it or not to take it and it's my business what I'm going to do with my life but I promise you this is not the mark of the beast as many of you who secure this nation will be fine God's going to take care of us. He will beautify the meek with salvation. But notice how it goes. The church of Thyatira, he says unto Thyatira, you know, I know your works and your charity. I know uh, your ups and your downs and your ins and your outs. And I know all that you have gone through, all that you have experienced. He said this, he says, but if you repent, I'll change things for you. He says, because the time is coming that there's going to be a kingdom that's going to rise on the face of the earth and this is the kingdom of the antichrist which will be promoted by the spirit of jezebel so there's two spirits that we're dealing with right now the spirit of antichrist and the spirit of jezebel and my children's children are going to grow up in a nation if the lord delays his coming it's going to grow up in a nation that i can only imagine because what I think is worse is not can even be remotely compared to what is happening right now. The new slavery, the new slavery that is in the land is far worse than the old slavery of the past. The old slavery of the past was you know you got whips on your back and they kicked you behind and stuff like that. But this new one is they smile in your face and give you a Cadillac. You're not free not free you're not, you, 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 you're not free they hate you just because of the color of your skin and they took the chains from around your ankle and they're allowing you to put it on your own neck look at the rappers I mean it's diamonds and it's gold but it's, it's weighty and the price that they have to pay in order to wear it Shh. I know you don't want to hear this message 
but I promise you, the spirit of Jezebel is alive. And the spirit of Jezebel speaks of two persons, an Old Testament person and a New Testament person. The Old Testament person is married to Ahab, who is the king of Israel. Jezebel's father's name meant to catch in a snare. She's an idol worshiper, and she turns the whole nation into idol worshipers. She has 400 prophets, and her husband has 450 prophets. Together, they have 850 prophets. The Jewish folklore tells us that Jezebel's prophets were all women who dressed like men. Small wonder why when Jehu came after and Elijah came after uh, Jezebel that she painted her face and let down her hair. Some even believe and suggest that was the first time he saw how fantastic she was. There's something in every man, there's something that God has built in every man that if the right woman steps to him, he'll run, hide up under a tree, poke his bottom lip out, and stick his thumb in his mouth. The power of a woman, natural power of a woman, imagine that coupled with seduction and a satanic assignment to take you out. The governor of New York City led us through the greatest instructions during the pandemic. That's what he did for us. And you know, New York City was the epicent epic center. Everyone looked to it. He, he led them through. And then there were those who saw that this guy could be the president of the United States of America. And what did they do? They went into his history and into his past. They began to pull ladies out who were saying that he inappropriately touched him. He inappropri I, don't, I don't know I wasn't there. But somebody's going to have to wake up for the brotherhood somewhere along the line. I'm going to tell you why. Because if you ever spat on the ground or jaywalked 40 years ago, when you're running for anything that is of any importance, people can't find nothing on you today. They go back 100 years. Which person in this room don't have something that transpired in your life that you would like to forget? This is what the power of salvation is. And, and, and that's why I can't understand when Christians do it. Because we were all something before we became born again. The scripture says, and such were some of you. But now you are washed, you are cleansed, you're redeemed. An Old Testament and a New Testament. These two individuals operate in the realm of the spirit. And their job is to bring to the forefront the Antichrist. Now, the Antichrist doesn't necessarily mean that he's against Christ in as much as anti also means another. And if ever there was a time that we're seeing the rise of all of these different expressions of God and the church embracing all of them, this is a crazy time. And so the story of Elijah the prophet and Jezebel can be found in 1 Kings chapter number 19 verses 1 through 7. I hope you at home have something to write with and it says this. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more also. Now, what I want you to do I want you to read that again, but I want you to read it like you read it. And I, and I just learned how to read the other day. So, I, you know, and it says this, uh, it says in verse number 17, well, verse number 16, it says, and he causeth all both small and great. I mean, you read over that and he calls it all small, but no, no, that's not how you read this text right here. This text is prophetic. And I promise you, if you push the button, the animation will come. What you say controls the animation over there. Here we go. Verse, Verse number 16. Verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bound, to receive a mark on their right hand or in their foreheads. And 
that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Good no, you know what, George Bloomer? George Bloomer. Colin, I'm gonna give myself an offering on that one. There, did I do good on that one, huh? Yeah, oh, they're punking out for. Were you scared of the text? Here it is. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. And his number is 600, three score, and six. I'm going to let you do that. We're gonna, I'm going to let you do that. Let me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you do that. Do that. Do that. Uh-huh. Here is the wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. See, that's what's happening to you ladies out there. You keep on marrying these pretty boys. That's your problem. That's your problem. There's some things you don't do cute. Is that mic on over there, Reese? So, but you can read it out from where you are, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's verse, it is verse number 18. Verse number 18. Someone hold the mic for him so we can have the music and hold the paper up and so he can see it. And you got to do all that. You got to do all that. And and, and he's going to be able to do it. I ain't been it and played at the same time before. Huh? I haven't read it and played for you at the same time before. Well, you're going to learn how to do other things. Walk and chew gum at the same time. Multitask. It's, it's called multitask. There we go. Somebody got to hold his paper. Somebody got to hold the paper. I can't see. And you got to hold it in front of his good eye. Yeah. The third eye. That third eye. <laughs> no, 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 we don't want to hold it in front of the third eye. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bethel Family Worship Center. Now watch what it says here. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and six. All right, I, I, I put too much faith in him. I'm trying to play it. But well, let me do it one more paper. time for you so that you understand this. He's this text right paper, here man. is extremely important. What does it say? Let him that hath wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. Relax. For it is the number of a man. Relax. His number is 600. Relax. Three score. Pause. And six. Thank you very much. Second Kings chapter number uh, one. Second Kings chapter number 19 verses one through seven reads like this. Just start reading. Uh huh. So let the gods do unto me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and he went for his life came to Bathsheba, uh -huh. which belongeth to Judah, and he left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and, requ 
sins and requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life for I am not better than my father's. Mm. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, arise and eat. And he looked and behold, there was a cake baking in the, on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. All right, so this is, this is, this is um, a very, very serious piece. And I want you to uh, understand what has transpired. In Revelations chapter number two, the spirit of Jezebel is announced. In Revelations chapter 13, the spirit of Antichrist is announced. In 1 Kings chapter number 19, we go back to share with you how the physical person Jezebel corresponds with the spirit, with the spirit of Jezebel in Revelations chapter number 2. In Revelations chapter number 2, what we begin to experience in this area of, of, of this conflict, this, this, this battle, is that the spirit of Jezebel is after the kingdom of God and the prophets and the apostles prophets and apostles would better realize that they're under a humongous attack in this hour at this particular time on last week we dealt with the principles of Jezebel today I want to show you what is transpiring and what is happening in Malachi chapter number four verses five and six it says behold I will send you the spirit of 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 uh, behold, I will send Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall return the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the land with a curse, with the curse. So hear me now. When the Bible says that I'm going to call for the spirit of Elijah, uh, he's not asking Elijah the man to come but the spirit that was resting on Elijah to come. So now if the spirit of Elijah is going to come, there's an eschatological uh, quote in the text before the great and, and dreadful day of the Lord. That's the end times. So God is saying that in the last days, we are going to need to employ the spirit of Elijah, the spirit that was on Elijah in the days of Elijah. We're going to need that in the 21st century, in 2021. So we have to ask ourselves the question, what did Elijah encounter? What did he come up against? And what type of spirit did he deal with? Well, he spoke, he dealt with the spirit of Jezebel. And Jezebel had a, a threefold uh, uh, assignment. That was idol worship, uh, 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 equal, uh, 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 gender equalization, and uh, the murder of children. Those three things, which are now very, very prevalent in the earth. We have false religion rising up everywhere. People are into everything. They're into spirituality. They're into witchcraft and sorcery and necromancy, and they all call it spirituality. Uh, we're dealing with gender uh, equalization, the, uh, uh, the gays and, 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 and Black Lives Matter and, 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 and all different types of the emergence of, 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 of men and, and, and women and not being able to even be able to, 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 to uh, on some applications, uh, they have uh, 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 male, female, gay, or other. On applications, the, the gender neutralization and then the murdering of children in the womb and also out of the womb. Out of the womb uh, is uh, abortions. In the womb is miscarriages, that we are actually dealing with those same three things. And so God says the only thing that's going to be able to combat this is the spirit of Elijah, which means that we must enter back into our ability to combat these forces, watch this, with the supernatural. Now, I, I, when, I, when I talk on this piece that I'm going to mention right now, I get on the nerves of a lot of young people. Uh, but one of the things that the enemy has done he has removed the genuine intimacy between man and God and has replaced it with a, 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 a disguise 
uh, or, or, or a, a, a spirit of seduction that seduces you into a false intimacy. And so when you deal with Greek mythology and you deal with sororities and you deal with those different types of things, the number one thing that is pushed, whether it's, is, uh, whether it's Islam or it's uh, uh, masonry or it's uh, uh, the sororities, one of the things that they push very, very strongly is what? The brotherhood. The brotherhood. And that's the thing that catches the young people. That's the thing that, 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 that endears individuals because the church who has Jesus on the inside, who, 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 who is supposed to be the, 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 very, uh, the very essence of love, is full of crap. But these, I have people, a uh, 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 family that went to our church here, and uh, uh, the husband was a motorcycle. He liked to be in a motorcycle gang. And they said, what was the motorcycle gang? And they meet on uh, three times a week, and they ride, and they have a motorcycle club. And, and I went to him, and I said, what, what, what's the whole deal? And he says, it's the fellowship. The, 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 and he's not lying. He's telling the truth. It's the fellowship. And the fellowship is a lot better than the fellowship in the church. When preachers are in the pulpit, they spend most of their time telling you to stay away from each other. They ain't doing that in the motorcycle club. They ain't doing that in the sororities. They ain't doing that in the, the masons. They got their, they, they got their secret handshakes and they wish you, they know how to go into places and walk out guilty as hell. And they know how to do, connect with it and, and, and walk out free. The fellowship, they know how to move amongst each other and Christians don't know. Because when you, when you become a Christian, you don't know how to do other people right. In fact, some people are, are, are do people better when they are, are in the world than they were ever. Some, some, some of my friends that don't know Jesus, yeah, I got friends that don't know Jesus. Some of my friends that don't know Jesus treat their wives and their families much better than people who call themselves saved. No amens in the whole cyber community. You at home, you didn't say amen to that. A few of you with that nigga, you just looked at him and said, mm -hmm looked away and so the, 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 this this false intimacy he replaces it with a false intimacy and it's called the brotherhood and they know how to fellowship and they know how to look out for each other they know how to look out for each other in business they know how to look out for each other in courtship they know how, oh yeah they know how to do it and so it moves you away from causes you to drift away from the things of God and find yourself in a fellowship that is against God, but the fellowship part of it is godly. What do you mean, Bishop? The fellowship part of it is godly because the whole principle to being a Christian is loving your brother. Loving your brother. How, how much does it take for me to love you, Tim? How much does it take for me? Are, are you an easy person to love? You would like to think so. I, I think so. Mike, how about you? Right. Have, have you ever said to yourself, who would not like me? Now, now, if, you, if you're a person that have never had that thought about yourself, then you are inherently and organically wicked. If you, if, if, if you know why people should hate you, then you're in trouble. If you are oblivious of people that don't love you and don't like you and don't hate you, after all the things that you try to do that's nice and right by them, then you're in a good place. But if you are oblivious to that, or, or you know why, so I know why they don't like me. Why you don't like that, dog? I know why. I slept with his wife, his daughter, and his mother. Stop, why are you looking at me like that? I kept it in the family. <laughs> this, is, this is the spirit of Jezebel. This year, what are you talking about? He, the Bible says that he will put her in a bed with those that commit fornication, which is immorality and adultery. So he will put her in a bed with individuals who will sleep with your wife and not care about it. Sleep with your children and not care about it. Keep it all in the family. Should I stop here or should I finish the message? Because this sounds like we hit a grind, hit a bedrock. Serious. And the way many ministries flourish 
because rarely do you meet up with a Muslim who's a, who, who is a, uh, a genuine Muslim. Most of them you meet up with, they came out of the Baptist church. Very few Mormons, I'm talking about black folk, very few Mormons, we weren't born no Mormon. And singing on a Mormon uh, tabernacle choir, that didn't happen for us. Am I telling the truth? Something happened. When you see us into all different types of things, it's as a result of being mishandled somewhere. And out of the mishandling, the false intimacy presents itself. It does. You know, I wasn't always saved. And back in the projects, oh God, the guy had the same name as one of my sons. His name was Jeff. Jeff was a wicked Negro. What Jeff did, and I hope you're not like this, Jeff, free. Because Jeff was free with his love. Jeff never had his own lady. Jeff, all of Jeff's girls came from his boys' girls. Jeff would sit there and listen to the hardship that was going on in the relationship, counsel her away from him into his hands. So as a result of that, in Jeff's later years, he had no friends because no one could trust him. That's the kind of spirit that was on him. So he would listen to try to figure out, man, if I was you, if I had somebody like you, I would never treat you that way. Why you do that? Well, it's your friend. You know why? Nah, but see, I ain't like that. That's how he is, and I be talking to him about that all the time. And, but, you know, he don't want to listen to me. But if I had somebody like you, Jeff, you treat me so nice. You, you, know, you know, I'm watching around the room while I'm teaching this, and there seems to be an uncertainty or there's a fidgety going on amongst the men inside the room. And I think that I'm in a room surrounded around some Jeffs. Huh? Joey. Joey. <laughs> huh? Joey. What did that mean? Oh. What does that mean? I don't, I don't understand what it means. I can tell people at home they're enjoying this message this morning. What, what, is, what does Jody mean? Oh, Jody is there when you're not there. Is he quarantined? No. He got the vaccination so he can move around. He's out. Jody always around. I've never heard that before. Brees, have you heard that before? We must be in the old club. Jody. They say it in the military. Wow. Oh, I did hear that. Yeah, I did, I, I did hear that. Oh, that's the Jody they talking about. Jody back. Huh? Jody. Jody eating your food while you at work. <laughs> Well, Jody did me, and Jody ate my food, drove my car, sleeping in my bed, on my couches, walking on my carpet, and living in my house. Jody. Jody did me in. But thanks be to God that gives you the victory. He gave it all back to me. Woo! Stay focused, Bishop. I don't even know where I'm at in this message right now. Jody done messed the whole thing up. The Bible says that he's going to call for the God of Elijah and the spirit of Elijah. And the spirit of Elijah is going to come to combat a number of things that is transpiring in the nation. And so I want to conclude with this for you. To, to show you some things that are happening out of scripture and see if you can compare it to uh, headlines, breaking news, and uh, the newspaper as to what is going on. Uh, the first thing... Uh, uh, we must uh, prepare ourselves for is idols. The nation has become idol 
worshipers. There's the golden calf from the children of Israel when they left Egypt. Uh, this golden calf uh, went on and they began to worship this golden calf. And so they built this calf while Moses was up in the, in, in the presence of the almighty God. And this golden calf is stealing the presence of God. The golden calf is Jody. Isn't that Jody? That's Jody? Right. Stealing the intimacy that they had with God away and drawing it to idols. Uh, this was not only, um, that only did, did, did not only happen amongst the children of Israel when they were in Egypt, but when they were enslaved in, in, uh, 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 in Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar required that a statue or image of himself would be built. And then, as we went into our modern worlds, into the AD, after, after the death, uh, we saw Zeus, the worship of, of Zeus and these Roman gods, the gods of the sun and the god of the wind and god of water, etc. And then they began to uh, continue the worship of the worshiping of the saints when the churches came into place, holding crosses and us bowing down to graven images. Everywhere you look is a, a graven image, a graven image, a graven image, all into the church. And people would go and they would buy their little gods, their little idols and hold them. If you were to go into a person's house and you had to do a fetish cleansing, you'd be surprised of how many images that you have, and not that you worship them, but how many images that you have in the house that changes the aura or the mood of the spirit inside the house. Uh, at CPAC this, uh, uh, this uh, week uh, on the news, everywhere people are scratching their heads trying to figure out what went wrong with the Republican Party as they brought their own calf in, as they brought their own image in. This is an image of the President of the United States of America a golden image, a shrine to the president. In his hand is a wand. Go back to that picture. In his hand, there is a wand. He is wearing a black jacket, a blue jacket with a red tie. Red tie symbols the Republican Party. He's wearing shorts of the American flag, and he has flip-flops on, suggesting that he's still ruling the nation while on vacation. That is it. In his hand, he has uh, um, a, a, the, the Constitution, we are, the, we the people, and in his hand he has a five-pointed star, which is a pentagram in the form of a wand, saying that he can move his magic wand and shift things. Uh, on uh, on uh, Wednesday the 4th, Wednesday the 4th, the FBI had received information that um, the anarchists and certain groups had come together, they had intercepted information, they've come together to once again go after the Capitol on Wednesday of this week. They had to call in National Guards to the tune of another 10,000 in Washington, D.C., because they're saying that by the month of July, they're going to remove Biden and Kamala and they're going to get rid of the Congress there and put Trump back in. Never before in my life have we seen uh, a homegrown terrorist or terrorism like it's coming up right now. Our battles are not going to come from Iraq and Iran. Our battles are going to come from Mississippi and Texas. I promise you, we are in for something in this time and this day. The spirit of Jezebel promotes idol worship, turning the United States of America into an idol worshiping nation, country. If you put up the picture, that picture back up again, you'll see that even in the CPAC, there were individuals that went and pitched pennies and bowed down and prayed and praised at the foot of this golden image of Donald Trump. This is crazy stuff. Statistics are telling us that the spirit of, 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 the spirit of Jezebel is in the land and it attacks marriages, okay? 51% of marriages now are ending up in divorce. Uh, 18 to 20% of, of pregnancies and abortions uh, um, uh, are taking place in America. Uh, the Bible uh, uh, is telling us that this spirit will come and it will be murder children. So you have the worshiping of idols, 
uh, the destruction of marriages. Uh, and I, 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 I am fully convinced. I'm fully convinced at, as I look back over my life, I'm fully convinced that while I was doing ministry, there was a spirit of Jezebel assigned to rip and tear my marriage apart. I, I believe that at the base, the, the core of divorce is a spirit of Jezebel that comes to just destroy the marriage. Not, not, and, and no marriage, no marriage ends with one person. It's, it, both of them, but both parties play a part. I'm not blaming anything on her. I did my part. She did it. But, but I'm saying behind that, a uh, thriving ministry, thriving church, making money, rich, living in mansions, flying private jets, and the whole thing comes apart. There's got to be a spirit somewhere that is attached to that. 18 to 27 percent of 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 pregnancies and uh, end up in abortions, all right? The highest rates of abortions uh, are now happening between women between the ages of 20 and 24 years old. We also are experiencing the occultic worship in the nation, occultic worship, uh-huh. Nations that practice and succumb to witchcraft and the occult. Number one, South Africa. Number two, Chile. Number three, the Philippines. Number four, United Kingdom. Number five, Haiti. Number six, Mexico. Number seven, Romania. Number eight, Central African Republic. Number nine, Saudi Arabia. You know what? I looked at this thing on my way coming. I was on the phone talking with my, one of my friends, and I found out that the leading country in the world of witchcraft, you know what the country that is? The United States of America far more witchcraft is observed and practiced in America than any country on the face of the earth. Pornography, the industry of pornography, uh-huh. The pornography industry is enormous, raking in an estimated 16.9 billion each year 16. in the United States 9 alone. 16.9 billion dollars a year from a person sitting at home watching something. Now, remember, remember, pornography, you ain't touching in pornography. You ain't kissing, you ain't hugging. Or if you're doing any kissing, you're kissing yourself. You're hugging, you're hugging yourself. Understand this, $16.9 billion industry. It is also said that one-third, one-third of the Internet is porn sites. One-third of the Internet porn sites. Y'all getting uncomfortable in here again. I'm going to invest in a gadget, in a, in a app that downloads information to me on all the people that I know so when they go to a website, my phone will beep <laughs> so that I can help them. How many times a day do you think my phone is going to be? Beep, 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 beep. Pornography and addiction, uh-huh, frequently. Watch this here. Co-occurs with other mental health disorders. Number one, depression. Two, anxiety. Three, social anxiety. Four, mood disorders. Now, 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 Bishop Bloomer, you mean to tell me that people who um, pleasure themselves through pornography uh, deal with depression? I, I, you, playing video games, smoking dope, and watching porn at the same time. That's got to be depression. <laughs> oh, you think I'm joking? Mike, do you think I'm joking? Oh, no. I'm serious. One TV's on the porn, got the joint in the, the smoking the dope, and playing the video game. It's saying, that's depression, depressing. And it enters you into sexual addictions. That's number five. Number six? Substance use disorders. Number seven, memory problems. 
Number eight, smoking and tobacco use. Number nine, erectile dysfunction. It's very, very important for you to understand that I wanted to put together a list for you so that when you watch this morning, you can begin to ask yourself, how do I get delivered from this thing that is on me? I got some responses from some young ladies who had abortions and they can hear the babies crying psychologically. And when they sleep, they nurse the baby that they got rid of. They need a deliverance. There are others who miscarried and can't sleep. There are others who have gotten themselves caught up as the spirit has drawn them in. What the spirit of Jezebel comes to destroy, what is she after? 13 things I want you to take a look at. And you might want to take a screenshot of this if you're watching it by uh, uh, the internet so you know how to pray. Number one. Manhood. Manhood. This spirit is out to destroy you and to take away from you the ability to be the man. Number two. Prophets and apostles. This spirit is after the supernatural. Every prophet, every apostle who is called, this spirit is after them. Number three. Marriages. Number four. Kill church through abortions and miscarriages. Number five. Promote the Antichrist. Number six. Turn nations into idol worshipers. You think that's going to happen here in the United States of America? It already started. It's already started. It already started. Every pastor, black, white, Indian, Chinese, Mexican, Latino, whatever, all pastors, when they saw that statue of, of should have should have bombarded CNN and declared that this nation is a nation that serves God. They're silent because it's their guy. Number seven. Comes to destroy the position of spiritual fathers. Many of these young preachers today have no spiritual father, no spiritual covering. Not, not, not guys, I know I get on your nerves from time to time. But is there a little respect for me in your heart? That's a question. I mean, if you don't have it, I, I don't, you know, I, there's nothing I can do about it. The question is why? Why do you have a little respect for me? Or any respect for me? Huh? Because I'm a spiritual father. And spiritual father makes mistakes, right? But this guy here is honest with you. I don't pretend to be one thing over here and something over there. I know when I get mad, I cuss you out. I know that. I'm asking God to help me with that. But he is. Help me, Jesus. I'm not making this right. I'm not saying it's okay. I know I look at what I'm not supposed to look at, and sometimes I look at it again and say, help me, Jesus. Oh, God, if you don't remember. I refuse to allow a false spirit to drive my public appearance so when I fall, you look and you say, I know it ain't him. I want to be honest. And the way that I do it is I pray, I fast, I seek the face of God, I laugh, I enjoy life, but I'm myself. And I give you permission to be yourself. What number we at? Thank you very much. What number we at? Number eight. Number seven comes to destroy the position of spiritual fathers. That's a serious, serious thing. I've had, I've had conflicts with my, my physical father and I've had conflicts with my spiritual father. I didn't agree with everything, but I never disrespected him. My physical or spiritual. And anything I felt, I felt it up under my breath and I didn't share it with other people. Even now, didn't share it with other people. I held that thing. Because of it, the Lord has blessed me. Number eight. 
fights the supernatural. I want every person inside this room to embrace the supernatural once again. I want you to start praying and seeking God's face, and I want you to begin to speak things into the atmosphere that ultimately will shape. I want you to stand in such authority that people that would try to control you, in their mind, they would say, I ain't going to work, so I don't even want to pay my I want you guys to be as real as you possibly can be. Not playing games, but be serious. Because we're going to heaven. Amen. I, I plan on leading all of you guys to heaven. Now, of course, you're going to get there before me. Because I'm staying here as long as I can. <laughs> as long as I can. I'm eat every piece of cheese. I'm going to drive every car and live in every mansion. Y'all go ahead on. i see you when you get there. All right. See, my thing is the reverse of Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King says, we the people will get to the promised land, but I may not get there with you. See, so he went first. I ain't going first. I'll be right here, and you call me from there and let me know everything's all right. <laughs> but we're going to get there. Love you guys. Number nine. Against signs and wonders. It's against signs and wonders. Ain't nobody getting healed. Why are you paying tithe? What are you giving your money to the church for? Against signs and wonders. Ten comes to establish the kingdom and dominion of the Antichrist. And we're seeing that shape right now. We're seeing the shape right now. Man, and I'm not talking about mankind, I'm talking about physical men, are under the greatest attack that they've ever been under before. There's something happening in the gender world, the female world, amongst those feminists that hate men that are coming after us. Be very careful on your job how you speak to women. Be very careful what you say and how you touch them. Make sure do you have a real relationship so that you could maneuver. Do not think for one moment that in this hour and day you can be successful and have an advantage. You got $100,000 in the bank and that hussy is thinking about a way to sue you for every dime that you got. And all you said to her was, how you doing? We live in the time of the day, you don't have to do anything to a person. All they have to do is put it online. People believe anything that's online. You, have to do not, you don't have to do nothing. All she had to do is say you did it. And then after you prove that you wasn't even in the same state on that day with pictures that you someplace else, there's still people that still and say, I still believe he did it. And if he didn't do it, he was thinking about doing it. I, this is where we at. That's the spirit of Jezebel. Verse number 11. Uses witchcraft and manipulation to control leaders. Number 12. Comes to destroy your identity comes to destroy your identity and number 13 undermine and destroy kingdom authority it is here to undermine and to destroy kingdom authority and that's what this pandemic has done it has neutralized the forces of the church has created a brand new habit People are watching their church services not on time when they get around to it. They're still watching, but when they get around to it. They're not up at 10, 10 o'clock in the morning. They make no effort. No effort. Don't look down. Look, look, look this way now. They make no effort. Because Satan has neutralized the forces of the kingdom. You thought you was going to dance this morning, right? What you're really going to do is rejoice. You're going to rejoice because God has given you the wisdom and the tools to fight off this spirit that is on its way to you. So let's pray. Let's pray that the Holy Ghost would give you great wisdom on how to embrace God once again and to return back to your true love meeting him in the cool of the evening your family your friends your prayer partners your church community all covered under the blood of Jesus as we expose the spirit of Jezebel in Jesus name 
Amen and Amen. You too can be saved today, covered under the blood of Jesus, walk in the full blessings of God under the umbrella of faith and favor. It doesn't take long. And it doesn't matter how long you've been saved or been into it. What really, really matters is that you accept Jesus. I know you can't walk the aisles this morning, but you can raise your hand. I know you can't shake the preacher's hand, but you can most definitely open up your mouth and receive him as Lord and Savior in your life. You ready? Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, But if thou wouldst confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in his heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believe, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's what the word of the Lord says. And so this is your moment to give your life to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. You don't have much time. Call on him right now. for Christ to you, oh my brother. Woo. We offer Christ to you, my sister. He will give you brand new life. Life abundantly. Oh, I will confess the Lord Jesus, Lord, I'm a sinner, and believe in thy heart, Lord, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins thousands of years ago. I accept what you did on the cross, and I ask you to save me, to come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, wash me in your blood, give me the assurance that I have life eternal. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believing in him should not perish but shall have everlasting life. In the name of Jesus, rise and be healed, be delivered, be set free. Most importantly, be regenerated by the power of God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Welcome to the royal family. Just got born again. And we thank God for you today in the name of Jesus. I hope you wrote some things down today to understand where we are. Uh -huh. So you can walk in victory and in breakthrough. And those of you who are already saved and already filled with the Holy Ghost, get on your knees and ask the Lord while I'm down here praying, Lord, search my heart. Get stuff out of my heart that is not right. Get stuff out of my heart that is not correct. Because I want to be right. And you know whether I'm right or wrong. Can you do that? Yeah. Can you do that? All right. It's offering time now. And um, I look forward to being on the prayer line with you tonight. And uh, uh, because through the month of March, we want to make sure that magnificent, marvelous, much is our portion. I'm going to ask all visitors to the website today to do something for me that I have not asked you to do uh, in the 11, 12 months that I've been doing this. I'm going to ask all of my visitors who are watching today to set aside a sacrificial seed to sow in one of three areas. I'm going to ask 300 people to sow a seed of $30. I'm going to ask 300 people to sow a seed of $60. I'm going to ask 300 people to sow a seed of 100. 30, 60, 100 for the fold, for the fold, for the fold. And when you sow the seed, I want you to put up under it, done it, done it. 
This is your breakthrough seed. It's your breakthrough seed. I said, it's your breakthrough seed. I'm not talking about tithe. I'm talking about an offering, a sacrificial offering in the name of Jesus. I want this Sunday's offering to be the largest Sunday offering that we raise from the website. I want it this Sunday morning to come in. If you love Bishop, if you love your pastor, if you love your spiritual leader, if you love your spiritual father, I want you to sacrifice. 300 persons sowing a seed of $30. 300 persons sowing a seed of $60. 300 people sowing a seed of 100 The Bible said he blesses 30, 60, and 100 fold. The 30 is seed to the sower. The 60 is seed to the sower and bread to the eater. The 100 is a thousandfold because the seed of accumulation is coming forth and God is going to continue to do it. Let's loose this in the name of Jesus. Those of you that are getting ready to sow your tithe, when you're getting ready to bring your tithe, you bring your tithe and your offering, I want you to get that right now. There are three ways that you can sow, your four ways that you can sow your tithe and your offering to the church. Text Bethel to 844-888-9183. Online giving, BethelFamily.org. Cash app, dollar sign, BFWC, 515. Or mail it to 515 Dow Street, Durham, North Carolina, 27701. Your Taroma seed, your Taroma seed. Bring the priest a portion of your dough that he might consume it and the glory of the Lord shall not depart from your house. The glory of the Lord shall not depart from your house or from your dwelling. All right? And here's your Taroma. Cash app, Warfare Ecology, Zell, Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Those that like to use the turtle, you can put it in the mail. Uh, yeah, GGB Ministries, P.O. Box uh, 3867, Durham, North Carolina, 27702. Or you can go to Giveify. Now, I'm asking, I'm asking, I'm asking, I'm asking for 300 to sow a seed of 30. 300 to sow a seed of 60. 300 to sow a seed of 100. Start sowing that seed right now. The anointing that is on my life to get wealth and the wisdom that is associated with it, I partner that with you now in the name of Jesus. A seed that is sown into the soil with purpose will produce a forest uh, that you can store in the storehouse. I'm believing God right now in the name of Jesus. Now put done it, done it. Thank you very much. Done it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your seed of 30. Done it. Done it. Done it. Done it. There you go. Done it. Done it. Done it. Done it. 30. Done it. Done it. Done it. Done it. Done it. Done it. Yeah. Right. Done it. Done it. Now somebody come on. Come on over to the 60s. Come on. Come on. 60s and and 100s. Yeah. It's easy for you to do the 30. Come on. Come on. Sacrifice and sacrifice and do the 60 and do the 100. Oh, you know. Whether I'm right, you know when I'm wrong. Hey, you know whether I'm right or wrong. Four ways to sow the seed. Bethel uh, uh, text Bethel to 844-888-9183. Online giving BethelFamily.org. Cash app dollar sign BFWC 515. Ah, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, uh, yeah, 515. All right. Uh, yo, ooh, they messed up my... Uh, all right, mail, uh, 515 Dow Street, Durham, North Carolina, 27701. Cash app, cash app, dollar sign, Warfare Ecology. Now, they they, they, they snatched our other Warfare Ecology, our other uh, cash app, so we had to go this way. So take a screenshot of that. A big guy ain't there. If you're sending it, it ain't going nowhere because big guy ain't there no more. Bishop Bloom ain't there. Warfare Ecology. Warfare Ecology. Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give. Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. You know whether I'm right. You know when I'm wrong. Hey. You know when I'm right and when I'm wrong. You know, if I got 30, you know, if I got 60, you know.
know if I can give a hundred. Oh, you know if I got thirty. You know if I got sixty. You know if I can give one hundred. Search me, search me, Lord. I said, search me, search me, Lord. Search me, search me, Lord. I said, search me, search me, Lord. Search me, search me, search me, Lord. Hey, search me, search me, Lord. I said, search. Text Bethel to 844-888-9183. Online giving, BethelFamily.org. Cash app, dollar sign, BFWC 515. Or put it in the mail, 515 Dow Street, Durham, North Carolina, 27701. Uh, cash app, Warfare Ecology, Zell, Bloomer at BishopBloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Now you're sowing, you're sowing 30, 60, you're throwing 30, 60, and 100. 30, 60, and 100. Yeah, you're sowing it from New Zealand. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. From Canada, thank you. Thank you. You're sowing that seed. You're sowing that seed. From New York City, thank you. You're sowing that seed. From Florida, from Miami, from Jacksonville. Wow, from Gainesville. You're sowing that seed. You're sowing New Jersey. You're sowing that seed. 30, 60, and 100. South Carolina, Columbia. It's Columbia. Marion, South Carolina. You're sowing that seed. You're sowing that seed. You're sowing that seed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. North Carolina, Raleigh, Raleigh, Raleigh. Yeah, Raleigh, yeah, right. Durham. Raleigh, right? Henderson, North Greensboro, Charlotte, Gastonia. You're sowing that seed. 30, 60, 100. 30, 60, 100. Bishop, I'm standing with you. I know you're in the parking lot. I know the thousands of families that you feed. I know that you didn't lay your staff off during this, during this uh, 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 pandemic. I know we want to support the man that's supporting the community. We know that you got clothes for the kids. We know that you put coats on their back. We know that you paid light bills. We know that you paid water bills. We know that you paid mortgage. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Search me, uh, search me, search me, Lord. Hey, Memphis, Memphis, thank you so much. Memphis, Memphis, thank you. Thank you so much, so that seed. So that seed, 30, 60, and 100. Bronx, New York. Bronx, New York. Brooklyn, Bronx, New York. So that seed, that's right. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Virginia, Virginia. Woo, South Carolina, South Carolina. Marion, South Carolina. Charleston, South Carolina. Columbia. Columbia, you know, I got churches in Columbia. Columbia, South Carolina, sow that seed, sow it. I call it out of you right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. you know, Lord, whether I'm right and you know, Lord, 
So that, so that seed, so that Morrisville, North Carolina. Yeah, so that seed, so that seed. Get that offering in there. Get it in, get in. You know whether I'm right or wrong. You know, Lord, whether I'm right. You know, Lord, whether I'm wrong. You know, Lord, whether I'm right. Watch us every day on Warfare Ecology. Warfare Ecology, Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Get your prayer request in. Your prayer request goes to send it to prayer at bishopbloomer.com. Amen. Remember to be with us on our prayer calls. Closing out the week on Friday. Open up the week on Sunday. About to celebrate a year of prayer. Woo! A year of prayer. We did it. We did it. We did it. And we seen the hand of God on us and on our life because of it. Oh, you know, whether I'm right. Every Wednesday, Wednesday in the month of uh, the month of March, Wednesday, our food giveaway will be in the parking lot of, of Bethel Family Worship Center, the Feedem Foundation, Gigi Bloomers Ministries, along with the Joseph Storehouse at Bethel Family Worship Center. Thank you for your seeds and thank you for your support. One o'clock on Wednesdays. The number's at the bottom of the screen if you need information on that in Jesus' name. All right? Four ways to sow your seed to Bethel Family Worship Center. All right? Text Bethel to 844-888-9183. Online giving BethelFamily.org. Cash app, uh, dollar sign, uh, BFWC 515, or put it in the mail. Those of you that are doing your Taroma today, Taroma, Cash App, Warfare Ecology, uh, uh, Zell, Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal, me, GGB Ministries, text, uh, DGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559, or you can mail it or do give a five. Thank you for your seed. Those of you that are sowing that seed of 30, 60, and 100, don't stop. Don't stop. Don't you dare stop. Don't you dare stop. 300 th sowing 30, 300 sowing 60, 300 sowing uh, 100. Bishop, the word that you preach, the word that you are preaching, I don't mind supporting it. I don't mind supporting it. I'm giving up a honey bun and a Coke. I'm giving up a pack of Newport cigarettes. I'm giving up a Coke 45. I'm giving up Old English 800. I'm giving it up. I'm giving it up and I'm sowing my seed into the kingdom so that you can be a blessing to help people everywhere, 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 everywhere. Oh, you know whether I'm right or wrong. You know, Lord, whether I'm right and you know, Lord, whether I'm wrong. I see you tonight in the prayer service. I want you to continue to pray for us and pray for this series. Two more messages in this series is going to bless you. We're going to teach you how to pray for the nation. Would you do that? Okay. Enjoy your family. Have a wonderful, wonderful day today. And I see you on the prayer call tonight in Jesus' name. God bless you so much. Hey!